Hello, and welcome to this presentation, Understanding UART. This short presentation explains the basic technical principles behind the UART serial communications protocol, as well as the format of UART frames. UART stands for Universal Asynchronous Receiver Transmitter and defines a protocol or a set of rules for exchanging serial data between two devices. UART is very simple in that it only uses two wires between transmitter and receiver, that is, transmit to receive in both directions. Both ends also require a ground connection. Communication in UART can be simplex, that is, data is sent in one direction only. Half duplex, where each side speaks, but only one at a time. Or full duplex, where both sides can transmit simultaneously. Data in UART is transmitted in the form of frames, and this presentation will describe and explain the format and content of these frames. But before we get into the technical details of UART, let's take a moment to talk about where UART is used. UART was one of the earliest serial protocols. The once ubiquitous serial ports are almost always UART based, and devices using RS-232 interfaces, external modems, etc. are common examples of where UART is used. In recent years, the popularity of UART has decreased somewhat. Protocols like SPI and I2C have been replacing UART between chips and components. And instead of communicating over a serial port, most modern computers and peripherals use technologies like Ethernet and USB. However, UART is still important and is still used for lower speed, lower throughput applications, in part because it's very simple, low cost, and easy to implement. As we just mentioned, one of the big advantages of UART is that it's asynchronous. The transmitter and receiver do not share a common clock signal. Although this does greatly simplify the protocol, it places certain requirements on the transmitter and receiver. Since they don't share a clock, both ends must transmit at the same prearranged speed in order to have the same bit timing. The most common UART baud rates in use today are 4800, 9600, 19.2K, 57.6K, and 115.2K. These numbers may look familiar to you, especially if you ever used modems or terminal connections. In addition to having the same baud rate, both sides of a UART connection also have to use the same frame structure and parameters. The best way to understand this is to look at a UART frame. UART frames contain start and stop bits, data bits, and an optional parity bit. We'll explain what all of these are in just a moment. As with most digital systems, a high voltage level is used to indicate a logical 1, and a low voltage level is used to indicate a logical 0. But the UART protocol doesn't specify voltages or voltage ranges for these levels. You'll also sometimes hear high called mark and low called space. One last important note is that in the idle state, that is when no data is being transmitted, the line is held high. This allows easy detection of a damaged line or transmitter. Because UART is asynchronous, the transmitter needs some way to signal that data bits are coming, and this is accomplished using the start bit. The start bit is essentially nothing more than a transition from the idle high state to a low state, and user data bits come immediately after the start bit. After the data bits are finished, the stop bit indicates the end of user data. The stop bit is either a transition back to the high or idle state, or remaining at the high state for an additional bit time. A second optional stop bit can be configured, usually to give the receiver time to get ready for the next frame, but this is uncommon in practice. The data bits are the user data, or useful bits, and come immediately after the start bit. There can be 5 to 9 user data bits, although 7 or 8 bits is most common. These data bits are usually transmitted with the least significant bit first. Let's look at an example. If we want to send the capital letter S in 7-bit ASCII, this is the bit sequence 1010011. We first reverse the order of the bits to put them in least significant bit order, that is 1100101. We then send them out. After the last data bit is sent, the stop bit is used to end the frame and the line returns to the idle state. A UART frame can also contain an optional parity bit that can be used for error detection. This bit is inserted between the end of the data bits and the stop bit. The value of the parity bit depends on the type of parity being used. In even parity, the bit is set such that the total number of ones in the frame will be even. In odd parity, this bit is set such that the total number of ones in the frame will be odd. An example might be helpful here. Let's use capital S again, 
which contains a total of three zeros and four ones. If we're using even parity, then our parity bit is zero because we already have an even number of ones. If we're using odd parity, then our parity bit has to be one in order to make the frame have an odd number of ones. It should be clear that the parity bit can only detect a single flipped bit. If more than one bit is flipped, there's no way to reliably detect these using a single parity bit. Let's summarize what we've learned. UART stands for Universal Asynchronous Receiver Transmitter and is a simple two-wire protocol for exchanging serial data. Asynchronous means no shared clock, so for UART to work, the same bit or baud rate must be configured on both sides of the connection. Start and stop bits are used to indicate where user data begins and ends, or to frame the data, and an optional parity bit can be used to detect single bit errors. UART has been around for a long time and is still a widely used serial data protocol, but in recent years it's been replaced in some applications by technologies such as SPI, I2C, USB, and Ethernet. This concludes our short presentation, Understanding UART. Thanks for watching.